So, tonight I'm going to talk about a few games that I came across on a recent trip to Edinburgh. Um, I was in Edinburgh to go to the dentist. Um, I don't live in Edinburgh right now, but I I feel like if you get a good dentist, you should stick with them. Base, uh, based on, you know, um, mixed experiences with dentists in the past. Um, yeah, that, that <laughs> that's enough about that. So, I was in Edinburgh, and walking back from my dentist, I, I was on the way to the train, back to Glasgow, and... I figured I had time to pop into a cash generator, which I was passing by. And I'm glad I did, because they had a bunch of Game Boy games. They had other stuff, but the Game Boy games were... Um, there was quite a lot of Game Boy games in this glass cabinet. And, um, yeah, so the, the Game Boy games I bought, the original Game Boy games I bought, were four pretty standard classics. Super Mario Land 1 Super Mario Land 2 The 6 Golden Coins Dr. Mario and Tetris None of these are rare, obviously or anything like that and they're not, I mean they're they're, they're classic games, but they're not all super interesting in their own right, but they were all two pounds each, which was quite nice. Um, I've seen them on sale for about a five or each, uh, apart from Doctor Mario. I've I've not seen that, but um, I I I I think that's probably just because people will pay that for them because they're popular, um, rather than them being worth very much at all. But uh, yeah, and. Um, I'll talk about this first because I was playing this on an emulator on my tablet originally, and I really like it. And I was um, yeah, I was into it, but it's pretty impossible to play on the Game Boy screen. I find it's just so small, and there's quite a bit of detail to concentrate on. So I I played it once, and I don't really know if I'll return to it. But maybe maybe my eyes will adjust. But I just don't really see myself playing it. Now I'm used to playing it on the kind of scaled up emulator screen, pixelated though it is. Um, Super Mario Land, not a, I mean a game I played a bit of when I was younger. I was surprised when I played it on the Game Boy how, how kind of addictive I found it. Um, I don't know, these original, these early Mario games are, I found, to be surprisingly difficult. It's something that I think people don't say, I don't hear people saying a lot about Mario games. You know, they say they're they're fun, they're classic, they're cute or whatever, I don't know. But they're quite difficult. Um, the controls are not bad controls. They're, they're, they're good, but they're quite fast. Some of them are quite slippery, certainly the original Super Mario Bros. Um, and it's not... Um, they aren't. They aren't cheap. They aren't kind of um, unforgiving in terms of their platforming and the way that something like Mega Man or Castlevania is. But they're um, they're not like super easy games to play, um, and in the way that when you fire one of them up, you sort of expect it to be. I I I start playing these games and I think I'm going to breeze through this, and it, that's not my experience of them when I get down to it. So I was kind of surprised to find myself keep coming back to it. And yeah, it's when I say it's a, a, a challenging game, you know, after a couple of days of coming back to it for 15 minutes to half an hour for, a, you know, just a wee session. Um, yeah, I completed it, which I haven't done before. And I really enjoyed doing it. And, I would play it again just for the enjoyment of trying to play it fast, trying to play it knowledgeably. Um, yeah, it's good. It's really good. Um, I kind of like how 
small everything is on screen, it really feels to me like, especially in the way that the levels progress in terms of, you know, there's a, a ground level, then there's a, a level with a lot of pitfalls and elevation. Um, it feels like the original Super Mario Bros. More so than Super Mario Land 2, which certainly feels like um, more like, mm, yeah, more like something like Super Mario Land or Super Mario Bros. 3. Back in a minute, I need to go check on my dinner. So I um, burned my tomato sauce and slightly overcooked my pasta, but that's all good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Super Mario Land 2. Obviously a bit more Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World. Um, this was a game that was really popular um, as a, you know, a Game Boy game when I was younger. And I feel like it was already old-ish at the time that my friends and I, well, you know, that I was aware of it and that it was in currency, um, that it was being played by people I knew. Um, but it was always really popular, it was really well liked. I remember the, um, the Mario, are they called worlds? Halloween world or horror, or zone, they're called zones which I remember re re remarking to myself was, you know, kind of a, a sonicism. Um, yeah, Mario Zone, which is the the zone based on, well, I mean, it supposedly takes place in a big robotic Mario. The levels themselves don't really display any characteristics that would betray that design, but I think something something about that st struck, you know, we boys as a, <laughs> something, there was something cool about that. Um, I actually, I don't think I really enjoy it as much. This feels like a bit faster paced and kind of more enjoyable, um, but I've, I've not finished this yet. It might be nice. I know that it's Wario's first appearance, and I always like the Wario Land games, which I don't have on Game Boy. Currently, um, so yeah, it, it's definitely good. I will we'll probably return to it. Um, I'd like to return to it, you know, if I just, yeah. And uh, yeah, Tetris. Oh, go on. Yep, Tetris. Uh, needs no introduction is a bit of a cliche, but yeah, that's Tetris. I know it came bundled with the Game Boy originally. If not originally, then on a kind of subsequent re-release repackaging. It's Tetris, it's probably like, you know, most of these games, it's probably not worth more than two pounds, but I think shops would opportunistically probably just charge a bit more for it. So I was quite happy to get this for two pounds and this, you know, this bunch of games for eight pounds in total, which is nice, you know, um, not a lot of money. And it's not, you know, with games like these, it's not about collecting in terms of, you know, if it's collection as in completionism, then yeah, sure, you have the games. But um, they are good games and they're worth playing, and that is, um, I'd like to say that's true of most of the games that I choose to buy, 
But um, maybe I'm getting caught up with the whole collection thing after all. Anyway, these games as well as one other I chose and the other one I chose was Pokemon Ruby, which was uh, a tenner, which was still a bit under the odds based on what I'd seen it for. I seen it in CEX for like fifteen pounds, maybe fifteen twenty pounds. Oddly, um, oddly I saw I've seen this for about fifteen and Pokemon Root, Pokemon Sapphire rather, its generation counterpart, um, for twenty. So <laughs> supposedly Pokemon Ruby is not quite as valuable. Now you might have noticed. Well, actually, I'll come to that in a minute. So I, I take them up to the desk, all these, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 18. Um, yeah, I take these all up to the desk and the guy rings them through and, you know, I've, I've decided to buy them. And I was saying, oh, you know, good selection, blah, 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 chatting to the guy a wee bit. And um, he said, oh, this one's been here for quite a while. I'll give you it for a half price. So I got, <laughs> got this for a fiver, which was nice. And the whole lot for, you know, uh, thirteen pounds. Although I think it was less than thirteen pounds, twelve fifty. It was. He gave me money off it anyway, half price or something. So that was cool. And um, I think he pointed this out at the desk, and I think that it is revealed by the ESRB because that's American, isn't it? Yeah, it says USA on the um serial number. That might have, I mean, you can, I, I, I believe that Game Boy games are region free. Nonetheless, this might have put me off, except, you know, it's legitimate. It isn't a reproduction or anything. But the nice thing is, when I first owned Pokemon Ruby, it was, it was a USA import. Um, so this is kind of more nostalgic to me. I mean... Nostalgia is is an element of this, but I, I, I don't know. I don't like... I feel like talking about nostalgia exclusively when you talk about this sort of stuff slightly diminishes the, the value that we see in it, that I see in it. Um, anyway, it, it, it kind of enhances this um, return, this regression thing uh, for this game in particular. I haven't played it yet again. I mean, I've played Pokemon Ruby or Pokemon Sapphire or Pokemon Emerald countless times over the years. It's, it, it, I wouldn't say I, I really have a favourite generation in terms of 1 to 3, which are really... yeah, The generations 1 to 3 of Pokemon are my favourites. I wouldn't say that I have a um, uh, hands-down favourite of those generations, but I'm very fond of Generations 3, and with the exception of some of the available Pokemon in Sapphire compared to Ruby, I definitely think I prefer Ruby. I think I find the, um, I don't know, I like Team Magma's design a lot more, their, their uniform things more than Team Aqua's design, and I think I found the, um, the idea of Team Magma wanting to expand the landmass a bit more compelling um, then T-Mac was planned to expand the ocean. I mean, I haven't played Sapphire, I don't think, so I suppose I'm not speaking from broad experience when I say I preferred one over the other, but you meet T-Mac when Pokemon Emerald, which I did play, and I just found them less appealing and sort of just less compelling as a, I mean, I don't want to say convincing, so I don't like talking about belief when it comes to these sorts of things, but uh, yeah, I don't know, Team, Aqua, Team Magma seems a bit more, this, that sort of story seems a bit more compelling or interesting to me. So, it's actually kind of nice that I got the, ended up with a, a USA cartridge again. Um, Who's to say this isn't the very game that I used to own? Um, no one can tell me otherwise. So yeah, that was kind of nice. A nice um, bargain.
Yeah. 